check, check. Can anybody hear me? It's not started yet. If, it's, if you can hear me, can you give me a thumbs up? If you can hear me clearly. I suppose all of you can hear me, right? Good morning, MDRT and Aspirant MDRT. Welcome to the MDRT Facebook Live show. This is brought to you by MDRT Malaysia. I am Lim Ren En, the country chair for MDRT Malaysia. Now, I would like to welcome you to this show. This will be a 17th continuous series of FD Live from MDRT Malaysia. You will see each and every MCC featuring in these sessions. So from today onwards, 27th, until the 14th of April, which is the completion of the MCO, we will be bringing you every day at 11 o'clock in the morning, a very sought after speaker to share with you ideas and also practical methods to help you through this period of lockdown. Now, so, Today, I would like to share with you basically five points, five things that I've been doing throughout this lockdown with my clients, with my family, and what I've done to, my, to, to myself. So this will be a interactive session. I will spend 20 to 25 minutes telling you what I've done, and uh, another 10 to 15 minutes to try to answer some of the questions if you do have. So if you have questions, please hold it. Because at this moment, I could not pin your question down. Please hold it until the Q&A session. Then you can tap it in into the comment section. Then I can actually have a look at it. And we will try to answer as many as we can, uh, provided time has permitted. So this session will end in about 40 minutes. Anytime. So if you have seen my video that I posted probably like six, seven days ago on MDRT Facebook uh, page, and also some of you may have gotten it uh, through WhatsApp group or, or some sharing through your friends' phones and all that. Uh, I, did, I, did a, I, did, I did a video uh, talking about five things I've been doing uh, during this uh, time of uh, lockdown. So I know a lot of you actually was uh, most probably a bit disappointed and it's a bit tough to be at home. You know, insurance agent uh, and the financial planner are... Uh, probably the most uh, people who cannot sit down uh, like me. I believe if you're an insurance agent, you cannot sit down. That's why you chose this career. You cannot be an accountant. You couldn't be an engineer. You have to be an insurance agent So you, because you like to see people. You like to meet people. So at this period of lockdown, a lot of us suffer a lot, especially psychologically. You know. But yet again, I just want to let you know, our business in life insurance it is one recession-proof business. In life insurance, it's not about the recession. You don't, we don't have to participate in the recession if you don't want to. Recession is only for people who want to participate. Why do I say that? Because our business sells to people. As long as they stand in the Chinese says, as long as the person stands on two feet with his head, up to the heavens, you can sell a policy to him. 
any other animal is four feet on the ground and the back facing the heaven. That one you cannot sell. Those are animals. And as long as they are humans, you can sell something to him. And to this, all the life insurance policy are so sophisticated. Even a diabetic patient can buy a life policy right now. Even a person with a, take example, a cancer patient or a recovered cancer patient can buy a PA policy from you. So basically, anybody can buy a policy from you. The idea of not participating in a recession is what class of business do you choose to enter? We are different from other business. Today, if, it's, if you are a big restaurant business owner, the lockdown will kill you. Today, if you are a construction business owner, the lockdown will kill you. Today, if you are in, uh, if you are in logistic, the lockdown may not kill you. You might strive with logistic. Today, if you are a medical doctor, running a, a if a lung specialist might not kill you, no, your business should run pretty well. But insurance agents, we can choose our clients. Other businesses, they can't really choose out your clients. If today, if your main con, your main con, main contractor, uh, you cannot tell an insurance agent, would you like to build a new house? No, it doesn't work that way. We have to go back to the developer to try to build a house for them or something, build a big, big building. So, but they cannot choose their clients. Their clients are so limited and inspected by the recession or inspected by the lockdown, but we can. We can choose whatever business or whatever sector of business that we, we are in, and we can choose our clients. So in a way, we are, we are in a wonderful business in this recession too. If your company is doing 12% and you are negative 20%, Something is wrong with you, not with the company, not with the insurance business. The insurance business has never seen a negative year in the whole history, you know, of, of our either it's a single digit growth or at least growth. So if you look at it this way, when the market is bad, people will buy more policies. Why? Because we are the safest place to put their money in. So back to the point. What are the five things that I've done? Number one, I read a lot. Uh, I have, I've been reading about two and a half hours a day now. And I would like to show you some of the things that I read. I read a series of books. Uh, basically, I woke, wake up about seven o'clock uh, and then do about a two hour uh, kind of reading. So after I read, then I'll go for my coffee, my breakfast, my run, whatever. But that reading of that two hours give you a clarity of mind. It gives you food to your brain. It improves you in every way. So I would encourage you to read. So some of the books that I read, I would like to show you some of the books that I read. Now, um, this is something not insurance. This is something hobby that, that I like to read history. You know, I'm a history buff. I like to read history. So this book is called Sapiens. A Brief History of Humankind. Oh, after reading this book, it gives you a very clear kind of thinking, a thought process. How humans behave. Why do we behave this way? Why do we have children? Why do we believe in God? Why do we uh, live together in a community? Why not human live like tigers, live alone? So it gives you a great glimpse into the DNA and the makeup and also a, an idea how, why, how humans behave and why humans behave. So with that knowledge, it actually gives you an advantage when you deal with agents, you deal with people, you deal with clients, because you kind of understand how, why, why they behave like way. So the book is pretty thick and uh, I finish it in about, say, a month. So this is one of them. So some of the insurance book in my earlier years that I read and, uh, and, uh, and I got very good into selling policies. Number one is actually, um, it only gets better by Tony Gordon. So if you Google it on, on Google, Tony Gordon, uh, you will find them. So either in PDF or you can buy it on Amazon as an ebook, you can buy that. Uh, or you can buy it somewhere else if you have other sources. So it's called, uh, it's only Get, it only gets better by Tony Gordon. So uh, I've read that book three or four times through when I was young. 
So when I become better, so I start reading book like this, the Feldman method. Ben Feldman is the world champion and also a world record holder on policies that he sold. At one year, he sold a hundred million USD worth of premiums. That was his record. The hundred million worth of USD. And that record still stands in America. You know, you can't, we can't even sell a hundred million sum insurance. And this guy sold a hundred million in premium a year. And that was in the 1980s, uh, mind you. So Ben Farmer's method talks about business insurance in a very simple way. So let me just read uh, one or two of the uh, things that he says. Um, he says here, Dear Mr. Ling, you will trade, say, take example, your business, one hour of your time for one dollar each day for the rest of your life. On July 14th, your insurance rate goes up one dollar per day forever. Best wishes. Something like that. Easy, easy to understand phrases that you can use. What I like about this book, it teaches you, um, it teaches you simple ideas. Take example, uh, when people ask you, what do you do? I sell insurance. Uh, what, what kind of insurance? Uh, I sell discounted dollars or discounted ringgit. So this is our type of client. So I, I sell insurance, but I sell discounted ringgit. Would you like to buy some? So what is your discounted ringgit? So people will ask. So my, my start will be, you know, if you work a dollar and save a dollar, it's so hard sweat and really hard work to save that dollar. But you can buy my dollar at two cents. If you're sick, not able to work, or the person passed away, I'll pay you a dollar. So your cost is two cents. So that is the insurance rate, 2% to a dollar. So that's what we do. Uh, the Belfin, the Felon method teach you all this. Uh, very simple idea about business insurance. So if you want to buy this on Amazon, I think you still have. But if you want to buy this on public bookstore, I don't think you can get. Lah. But one thing you can get is that uh, there's a guy called Biz that actually sells books during uh, uh, what you call these uh, insurance uh, conferences. So he actually has a few copies of this you can buy from him. So uh, one of the best guys who actually wrote insurance, business insurance books that I actually benefit a lot. You can see uh, the stage, the, the, you know, the, the book is quite crumbled because I've read it many times. This is Key Man Insurance by Lim Yong Xiong, a, a very famous uh, financial planner. Um, that wrote this book. This this guy is uh, unfortunately he passed away. The late Lim Yong Shong wrote very detailed key man insurance on how to value companies and all that. So you can get this during you. Know, I don't think you can get this in Amazon. You can get this during uh, insurance uh, conferences or whatever uh, with Vince. You know this guy, this old guy who sells books during insurance conferences. The third one that I read is this is from MDRT. This one when I read when about five, six years ago, uh, MDRT sales idea that works. You can go to MDRT website to buy this one. This is always available, okay? So other things I actually read, some insurance book that I actually read, the last one is, is this, Dare to be Different. This is by Sandro Fote. This is by Sandro Forte. You can see Sandro Forte, yeah. So Sandro Forte's books gives you a step-by-step, -step, uh, a step-by-step -step movements towards uh, top of the table or corner of the table, whatever you want. So it gives you a very clear uh, path on what you should do next, what you should do next, what you should do next. Uh, it even teach you how to call. It even teach you how to if they give you a script how to make telephone calls and when you're in front of the clients how to actually make him comfortable and buy a policy and and how to actually uh, uh what do you call this build your clientele create an ideal clientele so i read a lot of this uh through sandro forte and sandro forte is very good you should get this uh how do you get it uh go to sandro forte uh website and i think you can buy a few copies from there okay so the last thing I really like to read is uh, bi biography, Richard Branson, Robert Call, and, and all that. Why Richard Branson? I think he's quite interesting. 
you know. He's got to be an airline when he's in his 20s, 30s. So uh, why Richard Branson? Uh, why other? Why biography? Biography gives you a glimpse of a, a very successful person's life in three days. You know, you basically learn how he lived his life and what is his philosophy, what time he wakes up, what he does and all that in three days. So why not? You know, if you're going to learn from a master in three days, read their biography. It gives you more perspective. It keeps you thinking and all that. So that is this. So that's my reading habit that, that I read, things that I read and things that I do. So I spend about two hours a day actually doing that right now. So at this MOS, MCO, you should do that. You should start reading. Read, 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 and read. Okay? So the second thing I did is I strategize my business. So you should actually know who you sell to. A lot of agents have 100, 200, 300 clients, but you have no clue who these people is. You know them by their name and their phone number. And you do not know what business they are in. So, can anybody anybody tell me now what kind of business are you serving? Are you do you specialize in what hawkers? Do you specialize in SME? What kind of SME? Manufacturer, service providers, traders, whatever. What kind of business are they in? So, have you actually looked at your clientele? Have you actually really really looked at them and actually determine what kind of business are they in and what? What type of people are they? And most of us have not done this. This is about strategizing your business. Even a hawker knows how to strategize your business and a lot of insurance agent doesn't. So my question to you is that you should strategize your clientele. Now, how do you do that? So what I do is that I'll list down all my clients so you go to your insurance web portal website, your company's portal website, you know, and uh, you just list down the whole thing and then list them out. And then you try to filter them with premiums. What is the biggest premium and all that? So once you've got that already, you look at the top 20% of your client. So take example, if you have 400 clients, that is the top 80. If you have 500 clients, that is the top 100. So the top 100 policy, who are these people who are paying you the biggest premium? Once you do that already, I want you to evaluate them. Evaluate them properly. How do you do it? So by education, are they from 5, SPM, SDM, higher education? By income, how much do they make? Take a rough guess. If it's an accountant, probably like 5,000, 10,000. Or if it's the owner of a accountancy firm, probably like 20,000. A wild guess. So that, then you could a number on them. So five to ten thousand, ten to fifteen thousand, fifteen to twenty thousand, fifty thousand and above, a hundred thousand and above for big bosses and all that. So once you put a price range on them, then you have a clear view on what kind of what clientele are you serving? What kind of clientele in the society are you serving? The next thing is that I want you to put down the client's family, how many dependents they have, two, three, four children. Uh, how many wives and all this and that all these i have all these you have to put down now the, the the next thing is that if you can put a postcode on where they live that would be good why where they live the matara heights compared to sungai bulu has a different i'm not saying valencia sungai bulu uh. i'm just saying sungai bulu sungai bulu okay so what i'm trying to tell you is that that gives you a rough idea where your client is and when you then when the next set comes in i'll tell you when you target your clients you have a better idea geographically most of them where are they okay so uh, habit and lifestyle is very important are you the kind of your client drinks every night are you or, or your clients are the uh, the rich aunties who play mahjong every day that kind of thing you know you want to really really uh put that in and i just have to stop for a while i saw regina bodoya regina bodoya is the president of mbrt hi regina thanks for joining us in our uh, facebook live uh it is a real pleasure uh, pleasure to have you here with us regina i know it's about 11 12 o'clock at night in, in florida and uh thank you so much for joining us you know Thanks, thanks for the support for MDRT Malaysia. So Regina Budoya is the president of MDRT. 
Thank you, Regina. So let me go back to this about your business kind of evaluation. So once you have done that already, I want you to look at the top 20%. The top 20% of the clients, they share some same trait. Means they are either at the same kind of business or same kind of work, or they, they make around that income, or they behave a certain way. So once you had that already, now you know where you get your best business from. Third thing, focus on creating your ideal client. This is very important. You want to attract the right people to your life. It is just like attracting the right wife to your life. Right now. So you have to have an ideal image of a client. So how do you do an ideal image of a client? So that top 20% is what you look at already. So what you need to do now is actually basically reimagine that perfect client into your life. So if take example for me, my, my client base is two types. I specialize in two. One is the uh, the 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 Chaos Lung of Plumbing Association. Uh, I have a lot of clients there. Uh, don't ask me why plumbers, but I just click with them very well. The other is actually the medical uh, doctor's uh, uh, profession. I, I, I'm from a medical field, so I have a lot of those clients. So when you have that already, you want to attract the ideal client. Ideal client by characteristic, it must be what? Uh, reasonable, fair, kind. He must be a person who is a believer of insurance. He must trust uh, you, you know. He has to be, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, of a certain income group and all that. So once you have put that in, 10 to 20 kind of characteristics, once you have written down, very funny, uh, you will attract the right kind of clients to your life. And, and it has happened to me. Once I decided to do the medical uh, professional business and I wrote down the ideal clients that I want, True enough, it came back. The right kind of clients, the one that you want. So attracting your ideal clients is important by building them first. Build your ideal clients, write it down, put it in your diary, put it in your office, and attract them. So the next thing is what you do. Once you have the ideal client down already, you think, where can I get them? Can I meet them in a restaurant? Can I meet them at an association? Can I meet them at a football game? Can I meet them at a badminton game? Whatever that you can think of, that is the place where you can meet them and go and join those activities. So if you are stuck here now at lockdown, it is okay. Once you have planned that out, then you can go out when MOC is done. You can go out and attract the right clients. Now is the time to plan out, okay? So the fourth thing is that what I did during this time, during the lockdown, is that I called nearly every client. So, uh, I don't know whether you can see my screen. Uh, yeah, I can't seem to share screen right now. It's okay. So what I did is that I, I did something like this. I just just show you with my iPad. So I did something like this, name by names of all clients that I'm seeing. So I will put that down as daily SMS. I'll I'll, I'll list down as Monday. I'm going to call this guy Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then by daily SMS, by the calls I've done, video calls I've done, have I sent him a happy meal or not? And remark. So it actually gives you a sense of tracking of what you have done throughout the week. So like today, I'm supposed to see this guy. So take example. Today is a Friday. I'm supposed to call, um, I'm supposed to call um, Mr. Alex Chia. So I've not done it yet, so I'll better call him now, you know? So by the end of the day, if I have not I've missed somebody, I should call them at night and really finish up the list and send a call to them and video call. So I actually go one step further. If I know the guy is actually stuck at home with his children and everything, so I'll say, you know what, uh, uh, Mr. Hing, you know, let me, let me give your family a meal. Can I send you a meal? So. He will say, no, la, you know, it's okay, it's okay. But it's okay, he insists on sending that meal. Why? When you send a meal, when people ate your food, they somehow owe you something. Do you know, humans are born with a feeling of reciprocal. We would like to always give back, give back, and give back to the person who has been nice to me. So what I did is I sent food 
cakes, secret recipe is still open, right? Cakes, red food sent to their home, uh, their home. And the children will enjoy it. They will like the wife. The wives will know. Uh, will ask the husband well, who sent us a cake, and the husband will say, "Nah, the insurance agent. You didn't want to meet the day." Ah, you see. So once that happens, it is your chance to go back and ask for a policy when everything is ready, right? So what you need to do now is actually to build relationship with the clients, have deep conversation. You know, I have a client yesterday. I had a half an hour conversation with him. This guy, when we met face to face, having dinner, he will hardly speak to me this way. We will like have half an hour kind of lunch and gone. You know, we shake hands and he bought whatever he wants and that's, that's it. But yesterday when I called him through the phone, he had a half an hour deep conversation with me. Talking about his office, you know, what he's going to do with his uh, manufacturing business and all that. So, I mean, people connect in different ways. So try it, try it out. You might find good people, good clients talking to you. So another thing that I, I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna do policy review with every single client. So for these 20 days, I'm gonna do like probably five a day. For the top 100 clients, I'll finish policy review. When you do a policy review with them, you basically let them know what they have and really clearly tell them what they should do next. Should they be scaling down the policy because of the situation now, or should they be increasing their coverage? Always stand at the client's point of view. Once you are a good agent and you give solid, kind, and to their standpoint kind of advice, they will continue to trust you. All right. So the last thing is I did with is my kids. So. Uh, if you can, uh, you cannot see my house. So this is my house. I have a nice uh, house, thanks to the insurance business. So, if you look at uh, my house, um, we have done quite a lot of things with the kids, like playing badminton yesterday. I teach them how to play badminton. I've been training with my son on table tennis. He's uh, he wants to be a state player. We bought a new TV at home. The kids wanted the TV. I didn't have a TV for four years. You know, uh, yeah, it's okay. But now they have a new TV. My wife enjoyed the TV also. I enjoy the TV. So you can do things with your uh, with your children. So what I did is that I list down a, a list of things that I'm going to do with them. Let me just show you for a while. Huh? Okay. Let me just show you the journal. Uh, I have a habit of writing journals every day. So you can see this is the things that I'm going to do with the kids. So some of the things that I... I I put down is that clean the house, clean the storeroom, which we did. We did clean the storeroom, uh, clean my son's play area. You, you cannot imagine what came out from there, you know, food from maybe five years ago. Uh, um, oh, I found my pen cleaning the playroom. My Mont Blanc pen was in my son's, my younger son's pencil box. So the four year old. So you just imagine what kind of things they kept actually. Uh, this pen was missing since uh, Chinese New Year. So uh, we did uh, some cooking uh, uh, sessions with them. We, we teach them uh, how to do pizzas. You know, uh, my daughter was learning how to do dumplings and all that. My wife was teaching them to make bread. Uh, my sons learns how to make wraps, uh, pia, you know, the Chinese kind of food. Uh, we teach them to do a certain things, you know, in life that, that they must learn. So I do a lot of things with my children. I had, uh, we have deep conversation between me and my wife. We really sit down and talk about things, our life goals, what we plan to do in five years, 10 years. So that kind of thing. Um, do bonding exercises with your children. Have uh, exercises with them every week. Uh, sorry, every day at five o'clock at time with them. Take time to have meals, you know. Insurance agents are one of the one of those people who never go home at night, right? I mean, seriously, look at your face and look at my face. Do we go home that often after seven? We don't. So this is a very good time for you to really have deep conversation and close relationship with your 
family, especially your wife. I would like to tell all the men insurance agents, spend time with your wife. That's something that you really need to do, you know. Spend good time with your wife, with your spouse, with your children, and really have good conversation. Have a, you know, spend time doing a movie with your wife at home. So me and my wife, we did something else. We started to learn jazz bass and jazz drum. She was a jazz drummer. I'm a quite a good jazz bass player. So we did an advanced class in jazz, and now we can jam at night. So we we, we plan to start jamming uh, again. We've been lack, lacking off for one or two years. But anyway, we're going to do that again as husband and wife. So, so there are some simple things that you should do and you should actually uh, look at it, right? So now I'm going to, that's my sharing. I hope it actually benefits you, uh, right? Yeah, my kiss is disturbing me. Anyway, I'm going to open the floor for Q&A. You can actually type in the Q&A and let me have a look at it. So if I can answer you as soon as I can. Uh, right. So you can start asking me questions now, now. So anybody have any question? I don't see any questions uh, being posted. Um, hmm. Let me try to find one or two questions. Uh. I promise you I'm going to do this until uh, 3.40. All right. So uh, build your ideal clients. Some of you do. Uh... Huh. Okay, let's see. Hi, Ren En. How about new agents from Li Tong Chu? Huh? How about new agents who doesn't have many clients? Now, very good. How about new agents who doesn't have many clients? Where should you get your clients help from? Seriously. How, what can you do? Now, your new agents, either they are not too old or not like seven years old, right? They should be in their 20s, new agents or 30s. And of anybody uh, who has a good personality or who is fit to do this business, uh, their phone number have at least a thousand names, uh, right now. The second thing is yeah, their Facebook. You tell me they have less than 500 friends or less than, or they have 60 friends, uh, this guy cannot be agent. Uh. He's not a very good person, you know, he's not a very sociable person. So what I'll, I'll tell you to do is that, tell your agents to actually go back to these two pools, your phone and your Facebook page, and try to post and try to give out good information. Let me just stress, good information, not fake news. Huh? A lot of people actually post a lot of rubbish nowadays. You know, I get like probably a thousand rubbish Facebook. Uh, recently, I had one. This baby, la, you know, uh, was born yesterday and gonna die and ask you all the eat eggs so that you know, rubbish. Don't post all that kind of things. Ask your agent to really go deep, read from the internet, get good articles, and help his friends or clients to get out of the financial crisis. Post those kind of article. If you can do one step further, like my agent, what he did is even better. He 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 is very analytical. So he read through three or four articles and came up with one of his own and sent it to his clients. Now that is value. So when you add such value to your clients and to your friends, they will want to come back and see you. What would be the problem for your agents to go out and see them or to do an online chatting or whatever? What you need to do is to create value in your client's heart. That is what you should do now. So for new agents, please go back to your handphone and your Facebook and create value by giving them good information to write through this crisis. Okay? So let me see if there's any questions or more. Huh? So uh, how do you keep fit? 
Okay. I ran about five kilometers a day. So I've lost about 30 kilos around there for about a year and a half. I still need to have another 20 kilos to go before I can say I'm fit. Lah, you know? <laughs> so, and I don't eat carbs. I'm carb free for a year and a half. So how do you approach prospect during this MOC? Call them. You have a phone, SMS, WhatsApp, whatever that you can do, you know? Just call them. Now, this is not a very good time to give cold call, uh, please. No, 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 nobody wants actually to, at this moment, nobody, would you want a cold calling from a banker right now? No, right? So don't cold call people, all right? Call people that you know. Well, know how to start the opening and we're talking about key man insurance for business. Uh, okay, how to start? Uh? So normally I will say this for, for a business person, uh, I try to answer all your questions, but you know, there's certain time that I must stop, you know, seven minutes I must stop. So I'll try to answer all your questions. Uh. Now, how do I start business insurance? Very simple. I'll just tell them, you know what, Mr. Prospect, you run your business, right? You have 20 or 30 uh, workers from you. Now, if today you decide to take a three months long holiday, who can take over your place? Normally, he cannot answer you, Anna. Because as I mean, single person champion. Ma. So if they cannot answer you, the next thing to do is to do this. If you can't do it, if you can't get a person to actually do your role, what happens if you pass away? And you, what what happens if you're sick and not able to work? Who is gonna, who is gonna take over your role? A key man policy is to number one, protect your family. Why? Because if your business fail, your family will fail. The key man policy for SME is number one, to protect your family. Let me protect your family first. Whatever happened to the business, let's talk about it later. Let me give you three million in advance so your, family, your wife has this three million. And if she can sell the business to another business owner, or if she can pass the business to the partner or whatever, that's good. If she can't, she can sell the business, but she's already had that three million to feed the family. So let me just work that out for you, Mr. Businessman, so that I can actually keep your family safe first, right? So, oh, a lot of questions. So sorry, huh? How do you find a? Uh, oh my God! <laughs> how do you find a prospect from home? Call them. What do you mean? How do you find? Don't cold call. Now, uh. Okay, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, from Ms. Bong, uh, she says, uh, based on the current economy, is it harder for people to buy insurance? Absolutely not. What do you mean? The big policy might have some problem. But the essential policy will still sell. It will sell like hot cakes. What are you waiting for? Right? Um, I think I... Uh, all right. So, something somebody said, I think I stay at home. The most challenging part is self-discipline. What do you advise to keep up with this? Come on. We are all adults. If you can't discipline yourself, how you discipline your children? Some disciplines means wake up, dress up, and shut up. Look at me today. I'm doing this live. I'm fully dressed up, even, I'm, even though I'm at home. This is self-discipline. But I have to tell you, every day I go to work at my dining table, I am fully dressed. Not with a coat, but at least a shirt, tie, no, no tie, sorry, a shirt, and pants and shoes. I wear shoes. Now I'm wearing my leather shoes. That is discipline. Discipline, it is about telling yourself what to do right. So I hope I answer your question. So let me just skip some. Uh, I cannot answer everything. Uh. Do you encounter people who tell you? I don't encounter that. Do you insurance you take this opportunity to make money out of them? How do you handle? Make what money? How to make money out of them? I don't know how. You teach me. I, I really don't know how. Uh okay, let me just go down. Uh, okay. Um right, uh so let me see. Uh What apps do I use this thing? Uh, Excel file. Excel file is the best. Uh, uh, yeah, Brian Long. I do play basketball in Taming Jaya before. That is 
years ago. <laughs> so, uh, last question. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. So, the, this question is, should we educate our clients two, four, or six months once? What do you mean by educate? Educate means, what, send them articles or something? Now, what I do is that every six months, I do a periodical policy review with my clients. So, I have about 800 to 1,000 clients. So, I cannot do everything myself, like, you know. So, I have, I have four staff uh, that serves my clients. Uh, so, one of the staff, uh, Melissa, handles customer experience. So what she does is that she actually send out policy reviews every month to every client that has one month's uh, uh, birthday before. So we do do a policy review online with them and also call them. Uh, that is what we do. So education comes in as you like now, you know. Uh, you can send articles and all that. But do, do have a constant kind of, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, connection with them, all right? So let me answer one last question, uh, one final one. Huh. Wow, example how you call clients at this period and they speak. So all the clients that I call is people I know, I don't cold call. So basically there's no script. What is the script? It's like, so if I call you, hey, Honje, how are you? How are you doing? Are you keeping well? How's your children? How's your wife? Is that, that, that? Normal family friend kind of call, right now. So offer to do a policy review, offer to do something for them, offer to send them food, tell them to keep safe. If you have face mask, offer to send it to them, or they cannot get it or whatever. You know, try something and send information, whatever. So I don't really have a script, but because most of them are my clients already, or they are already family friends. So I think it's just natural to talk like a friend, like a really good friend, okay? So uh, that's all, I think that's, uh, okay, Hayati said, can we cold call during COVID-19? I don't think it's best to cold call uh, nowadays, okay? All right. So, uh, final question. How do you make notes from books? Uh, I don't. I basically, uh, like what I did with Sandro, uh, do I make notes? I don't make notes with Sandro. If I use... Oh, I don't have a habit of making notes physically. But if I use a, uh, what do you call this, uh, a book reader, uh, like I, Apple, Apple Books or, or EPUB or whatever, then I make notes on them. Uh, so it's easier to, to actually uh, follow through. All right. So uh, thank you so much for coming in. It's uh, 11.40. I promise you that we'll end this in uh, 40 minutes. And there is 1,300 people watching this. So thank you very much uh, on coming on. I I really uh, enjoyed sharing this with you. So let me just do a quick recap of five things that you do. Number one, you read. You read a lot to fill up your brain, to really learn. Number two is that you list down your client, strategize your clientele, know where your client is. Number three, strategize, uh, focus and attract the right clientele to yourself. Right, Focus and track and write down the right clientele to yourself. Number four, all your clients communicate, send them right information, do policy reviews, call them every day, call 20, 25 people every day to actually make that call, okay? The, most, the final thing is really have deep conversation and relationship with your wife, your children, and play with your children, have lunch, coffee, tea, tea break with your family member, talk to your mother, you know, one of the important things, talk to your parents, and really enjoy these 20 days at home. I think this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to really sit back and enjoy family. Right? So, thank you so much for staying with me. I just wanted to show you two of my, my children. Come. So, this is my youngest daughter. Say hi. Hello. This is my young, eldest son. He Hello. plays table bye tennis, bye. seriously, and uh, my second daughter at the back, so say bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, MDRT. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow, Man Mohan will be here sharing with you. If you can, we can.
So Man Mohan is a 26 years MDRT member, a past country chair for Malaysia, and also a regional vice president of MDRT. He has everything you need as the man to share with you, to share with you the ideals, the sales idea, and also the virtue and core values of MDRT member. Stay tuned, and I will end the meeting right now. I'll see you tomorrow, same time at 11 o'clock, MDRT Malaysia FB Live. See you tomorrow. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.